if you want to determine if an equation is a function or not, you got to get y by itself explicitly. Get y by itself. Okay, first of all, you're going to get y by itself. There are situations, though, where some of you already know what the graph looks like. And then from that idea of that graph, you could be able to determine what's the function or not. But for the most case, you won't be able to. You're going to have to get y by itself. So let's look at number one. So number one, we have this. Again, the direction says determine, determine if the equation defines y as a function of x. So determine if the equation defines y as a function of x. So number one, I'm going to write out what we had. We had y minus 4x equal 1. y minus 4x equal 1. First of all, is this a relation? Yes, in fact, all of those are relations, right? Because all those equations is a set of ordered pairs. So they're all relations. Some are functions, some are not. So if you want to determine if this equation defines y as a function of x, that means just if y is by itself, you get this expression, and is that a function? So if I get y by itself here, we're going to explicitly, explicitly, explicitly get y by itself. Okay? And if I get y by itself, I get y equals what? 4x plus 1, okay? Now, some of you can look at this equation and tell me that it is what graph? A line. But you got to be careful because are all lines functions? No, which one's not a function? A vertical one. Is this a vertical line? No. It's not a vertical line. If you're not sure it's not a vertical line, then what, what I would do next. Now, um, in a couple of sections later, we're going to talk about slope and intercept. So you could use the idea of slope and intercepts to graph these things. You did it in 90, 98. You had some stuff in 98 where you had to graph slope and, and intercept. But for here, we're going to use a t-table. And I want you to think of this t-table as that mapping again. Remember that mapping? Those two circles we drew? So when x is 0, what is my y value? 1. Good. So, so far for each x-coordinate, there's what? 1 y-coordinate. But let's do a few more. If x is 3, what is my y value? 13. Very good. When x is negative 6, what is my y value? 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Negative 24 plus 1 is what? So there's only one y value. So the question is this. If I kept on going, for each x value, would there be one y value? Yes. Yep, sure would. So is this a function? Yes. This is a function. So the answer is yes. Okay. Now I want you to notice this as well. Guys, if I were to graph this, if I were to graph this, 0, 1's here, 3, 13 is way up here, and I draw the line, couldn't I use a vertical line test? Yeah. Yes. So according to the vertical line test, this is a function. So, so y minus 4x equal 1 defines y as a what? Function of x. That's what we just found. 
but notice that one of the things that helped us with number one was actually getting y by itself and then using a t-table to see if for each x value there was how many y values? One. Okay? All right, let's look at number two. Number two, we have x squared plus y equal five. To do that one again, let's get y by itself. Let's explicitly get y by itself. So if I get y by itself, I get y equals what? Negative x squared plus 5, okay? Or 5 minus x squared. Does it matter? Does not matter. All right, I'm going to use the idea of a t-table. And, and when we do that t-table, think of that mapping that we did earlier. Okay, so listen carefully. When x is 0, what is my y value? 5. Very good, because 0 squared 0, the opposite of 0 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. When x is 2, what is my y value? What is it? All right, do you see how some of you are, some of you, okay, listen carefully to me, listen carefully, because it's going to be important when we start evaluating functions either today or Monday. Listen carefully. When I plug in 2, what is being squared here, x or negative x? x only. x is the only thing being squared. So when you substitute 2 into this, you're supposed to say this. Put that in parentheses, 2 squared, whatever that is, I'm going to take the opposite of that. Okay? And then plus 5. What's 2 squared? This becomes what? Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Okay, so be careful. It is not negative x that's being squared, because if I wanted negative x to be squared, you got to remember something you learned in previous courses. If I wanted negative x to be squared, I'd have to put in parentheses like that. There is a difference between this and this. One, is in, one has parentheses, the other one does not. Okay? So you may recall this from two semesters ago. You may recall something like this. Um, negative 2 to the 4th power versus negative 2 to the 4th. Here, what's being raised to the 4th? Negative 2. Here, what's being raised to the 4th? 2. two. Negative 2 to the 4th is 16. This negative, the 2 to the 4th is what? Negative 16. So there's a difference. So you've got to be careful when you evaluate functions coming up in a little while. When x is negative 3, I'm just picking some numbers for x. You could have picked any other number you wanted to. Because uh, all, all I want to know is, is whenever I plug in a value for x, am I going to get one y value or more than one y value? That's what I'm asking. When x is negative 3, I get negative 3 squared, right? Whatever that is, I'm going to take the opposite of it. And I'm going to add 5. What's negative 3 squared? 9. But this becomes what? Negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4. So when x is negative 3, how many y values did I get? 1. And then so you ask yourself, well, is that going to occur all the time for this, for this equation? Yes. Yes, it will. When we get into graphing the quadratic functions, this graph is going to look like this. That's how it's going to look. And did it pass a vertical line test? Yes. Pass a vertical line test. All right. So then you're going to say this. So then you're going to say, based on the directions, you're going to say x squared plus y equal 5 defines y as a function of x.
Let's look at number three. Number three. Number three, you have this. You have x squared plus y squared equal 25. Okay, number three, x squared plus y squared equal 25. Let's just get y by itself. So we get y by itself, we get y by itself, I'm going to get y squared equal 25 what? Minus x squared, okay? I have y squared now. Now, next step is this. I'm going to ask you how to get y by itself. Square root. You had that in your first test. But when I take the square root of both sides, what else do I need? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Now, listen carefully to this. So this says that y equals a positive square root of 25 minus x squared and a what? Negative. Right away, you can tell me, does x squared plus y squared equal to 25 define y as a function of x? No. Because when I get y by itself, there's a positive square root and a what? Negative. <coughs> So there are going to be many instances where for this one right here, whatever x value I pick, there's going to be how many y values? Two. I'm going to show you. Let's suppose x is zero. Did we pick zero before? So if x is zero, listen carefully. I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 0 squared, right? What is 0 squared? 0. What's 25 minus 0? 25. So this becomes plus or minus the square root of 25, which is plus or minus what? 5. What I found is this. When x is 0, y is 5 and what? Negative 5. Right away I say what? Not a function. So when you get y by itself, and on the other side you get a plus or minus, right away you say what? Not a function. In fact, do you remember what the graph of this thing is? It's a circle. You had circles on that first test. It's a circle where it's a center. Origin. And what's the radius? Five. So if you were to graph this, Do we get that? And right away, do, do you see it fails the vertical line test? So you would say this. You would say, you would say, x squared plus y squared equal 25 does not, does not define y as a function of x. Okay, look at number four. Y equal the square root of x plus three. So y is already by itself, right? Explicitly, y is already by itself. Is there something that I thought that you see? Hmm? Yeah, you don't see that plus or minus, though, right? You only saw the previous one. But here, that just says y is going to equal the square root of x plus 3. So let's just plot some points. Or, or do that t table. Do the t table. When x is 0, I get y is what? No, not 3, but what? The square root of 3. So when x is 0, how many y values did I get? Just 1. When x is 1, I get y equals the square root of 1 plus 3. That's the square root of what? Which is what? 2. So when x is 1, what's my y value? 2. Th yes, 2. And so just, just, just one y value, right? When x is, let's say, negative 1, I get y equals the square root of negative 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 
to. So if I kept on going, if I picked any number in that domain for x, would I get one y value? Yes. Now, last semester, and almost all of you struggled with some of this, but you graphed, you graphed basic quadratic functions, because there's one in the, on your final last semester, uh, absolute values, and then square roots. So one of your final, I think, was, was quadratic or absolute value. Absolute value. The graph of these, the graph of this would look like this. Remember, if you put it up, if you, when we did this last semester, we kind of looked, talked about it. It looks like half of a what? Half of a parabola. That's how we discussed it. But if you look at this, does it pass a vertical line test? Yes. So notice for each x coordinate, there's what? One y coordinate. So you would say y equals the square root of x plus 3 defines y as a function of x. Okay, now let's look at number five. Y squared equal x minus 2. Y squared equal x minus 2. Now get y by itself. So to get y by itself, what would I need to do? Square root. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. But what else do I need? And right away you see that, that whenever I <coughs> substitute for x, I'm going to end up with how many y values? Two, a positive and a what? Negative. So right away, I don't even have to use a t table. Because it goes back to the uh, number three that we did. So you would say um, uh, y squared equal x minus two does not define y as a function of x. Okay. Now, I want to say this. If I compare number five with number three, when I solve for y, I had that plus or minus, right? And here, when I solve for y, I get that plus or minus also. So, so when I do a t-table, for almost all values, when I plug them for x, I'm going to get a positive and I'm going to get a negative. So those are similar in that situation. But here's the question I'm going to ask you. In number five, is that a circle? Is number five a circle? No. In order for it to have been a circle, think of your first test. You needed an x squared and a what? y squared. x and I being squared? All right, so it's not a circle. Well, that looks like, if you were to graph it, do a t-table and graph. It would look like this. So does that pass a vertical line test? No. Okay, number six. Y equals absolute value of x plus four. You don't have to know what the graph looks like. You don't have to know what the graph looks like at all. The idea though is to somehow get y by itself. Is y already by itself? Yes. So you don't have to know what the graph looks like, although you had this last semester. The absolute value, you had to graph absolute value functions last semester. But you could just use a cheat table and see what your y values are. When x is 0, four. y is 4. When x is 2, six. y is 6, because the absolute value of 2 plus 4 is the absolute value of 6, which is 6, right? 
when x is when x is uh, let's see negative ten. When x is negative ten, I get the absolute value of negative ten plus six, which is the absolute value of what? I'm sorry, four. I'm sorry, Neg negative ten plus four, which is the absolute value of what? Which is six. So I get six again. But that's okay, right? It's okay for your y values to occur more than once. Notice that for each x, though, there's how many y values? Just one. So is that a function? Yes. So y equal the absolute value of x plus 4 defines y as a function of x. In fact, last semester, when you graph this, you may have forgotten how to do this, but when you graph this, it would look like this. Remember the absolute value is at V? That V shape? And so there's a passive vertical line test? Yes. But all you did was use a T table. Okay, number seven. X equal the absolute value of y plus two. All right, now we have this situation. There is, there's no way you can easily pick y by itself. And the reason is because of the absolute value. Y is inside the absolute value. So the way I would do this is this way. I'm still so going to use a t table. And if you go back to all the ones we just did, I picked a value for x and I found out what y was. Because if you go back to what we just did, y was already by itself, right? So if y is by itself, that's your um, dependent variable. So you plugged in for x. Here, x is by itself, so that's your dependent variable. So x depends on what y is. So that's why it's called your dependent variable. X depends on what y is. So plug in for y and see what x is. So if y is 0, I get x equals the absolute value of what? 0 plus 2, which is the absolute value of 2, which is what? 2. So when x is 2, when x is 2, it looks like I get one y value, right? But don't stop there. Don't stop there. Let's pick another number for y. Let's say 3. When y is 3, x equals the absolute value of 3 plus 2, which is what? 5. So it looks like when, when x is 5, what's my y value? 3. So it looks like, it looks like for each x value, there's what? One y value. Let's keep on going. Let's suppose x is, uh, I'm sorry, y is 1. I get x equals the absolute value of 1 plus 3, um, 2, which is what? 3. So when x is 3, my y value is 1, right? Okay. You want to give me any other ideas to try for, for y? Okay, so let's try negatives. Negative 1 for y. I get x equal the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2, which is the absolute value of 1, which is what? 1. All right, so when x is 1, I get 1 y value. Do I stop? No. You want to try some other y values? Negative 3? Okay, let's try negative 3. Let's see if, if you're going where I think you should be going. The same? Okay, that's exactly right. So you'd say negative 3 plus 2, which is the value of negative 1, which is 1. Hey, when x is... 1, I get a negative 1 and a what? Negative 3, right? 
So right away, what do you notice? It's not a function. And you could, there's an infinite number of those, by the way. So you could have tried a bunch of others and you would notice that, that for an x value, there's more than one y value. So for example, you could have said, all right, what if y was, let's say, negative 4? Okay? What if y is negative 4? I get x is the absolute value of negative 4 plus 2, which is the absolute value of what? Negative 2, which is 2. So notice, when x is 2, my y is 0, and what else? Negative 4. So that's another situation where, for that x value, there's how many y values? 2. So you would say x equal the absolute value y plus 2 does not define y as a function of x. So if if there's if x is by itself and there's no way you can get y by itself, see how y is inside the absolute value bar? Yes, the bar is not going to be a function. Just use the t table just to verify. So if you go to number eight, number eight, look at number eight. y equal x squared plus 6. y is already by itself, right? And you don't see that plus or minus on the other side, plus or minus square root. All you see is y equal x squared plus 6. Do a t-table. Since y is by itself, y is dependent. It's called the dependent variable. y depends on x. So x is my independent variable. So you plug in for x. So if x is 0, what's y? 6. So for each, so when y is 0, I get one y value. When x is, let's say, 1, what's y? 7, because 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 6 is 7. When x is negative 1, what's y? No, it's not 5. Be careful. When we start evaluating functions in a little while, it's going to hurt you. You're supposed to say this. y equals, in parentheses, negative 1 squared plus 6. What's negative 1 times itself? 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. Notice what I see. I see two y, uh, the same y values for two different x's. Is that okay? Yes. For each x, there's what? One y value. And you keep on going, you would see this. In fact, this is a parabola. It looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like that. And so notice, does it, does it pass the vertical line test? Yeah. All right. So y equals x squared plus 6 defines y as a function of x. Okay? All right. Now in terms of in terms of this section, this is probably one of the more difficult aspects of it given the equation. This part right here. That that's that that's the more that's one of the more difficult parts. Okay, so I'm going to give you the worksheet with this. Let me show you what it looks like. 